Today's notes are over applications of systems of equations, so word problems that we'll, we'll solve using a system of equations. And the steps that we're going to use to solve are the very first thing you're going to do is define your variables. Write them. Those are your let statements. Okay, let x equals, let y equals. Then you're going to write your system of equations. Then you're going to solve the system of equations and then state your conclusion. And I like to state my conclusion using that little symbol right there, which means therefore. So all of this work that I've shown, I can then make my conclusion that therefore, right? So anyways, all right, so let's move on. An example, number one, it says the local theater sold 80 tickets to their opening show. Each adult ticket cost $7.50 and each child ticket costs $3. The theater group earned a total of $519 on ticket sales opening night. How many adult tickets were sold? How many child tickets were sold? That's what we're looking for. How do I know that I'm gonna use a system of equations to solve this? I have adult tickets and I have child tickets. So I'm dealing with two different things, all right? And it asked me how many adult tickets were sold, how many child tickets were sold. Okay, so that's what we're looking for. So let's uh, let X equal adult tickets. And then let's y, let Y equals child tickets. Okay, and that's our first step. That's step one. So we've defined our variables. And I'm going to change colors here just because I like to. So then step two says to write your system of equations. Okay. So if the local theater sold a total of 80 tickets, then you're going to need an equation that's a total amount, right? It has no money involved. It's just the number of adult tickets plus the number of child tickets is going to equal 80. The next um, bit of information that we're told is we know how much an adult ticket costs and we know how much a child ticket costs and we know the total amount earned on ticket sales for opening night. So let's write another equation. If each adult ticket costs $7.50, and then $7.50 times the number of adult tickets sold will be what was earned from adult tickets, plus $3 for a child ticket, so that's 3y, equals they made $519. Okay, so I've got one equation that's like a total amount, or you know, it's just numbers, and then the next equation deals with money. And you see this a lot in system of equations, especially in Algebra 1 or Algebra 2. You've got a number equation, and then you've got a, um, a money equation, okay, a, a dollar amount. So now we're going to solve, and we have to figure out which method we're going to use to solve this system. And I actually um, tend to like the elimination method, um, especially in Algebra 2. So I can eliminate the variable x or the variable y. I'm going to choose to eliminate the variable y. How am I going to do that? I'm going to multiply everything in this top equation by negative 3. Okay, so when I multiply every term by negative 3, I get negative 3x minus 3y equals negative 240. Now what I'm going to do is add these two equations. My y variable gets eliminated. 7.5 minus 3 is going to be 4.5. So 4.5 times x equals 519 minus 240 is 279. I would highly encourage you to work with a calculator if you're solving these today, right? Because really the main thing we like to do is make sure you know you can set them up and you know how to solve them, you know, and if you're using a calculator, I typically don't mind um, my students using a calculator on today's types of um, problems. But, you know, some, some teachers are different. They say, no, you're going to do all this by hand, and that's totally respectable as well. So 279 divided by 4.5 is x equals 62. Okay. So what does that mean? What does x equal? This is why I like to define my variables. Oh, x equals adult tickets. Okay, 62 adult tickets were sold. All right, so I've solved for the value of one variable, and now let's solve for the other variable. I can take that 62, and I can plug it into any equation that I see. I'm actually gonna plug it into the top equation, x plus y equals 80. So I'm gonna replace x with 62. So 62 plus y equals 80. I'll do 80 minus 62 and I get 18. All right, so this was all step three right here, right? This is all step three. Step four 
I need to state my conclusion. So all of this, and I'm going to do it over here for the sake of space. Therefore, 62 adult tickets were sold. And 18 child tickets were sold. Okay, so all of our work led us to this conclusion right here. Therefore, 62 adult tickets were sold and 18 child tickets were sold. So let's move on to example number two. Example number two says, Sam owns a food truck and sells tacos and crepes. Okay, I've got two different things I'm dealing with here, dealing with tacos and crepes. So that's a, a really big clue over, hey, I'm probably going to be using a system of equations to solve this problem. Last Friday, Sam sold 56 tacos and 47 crepes and made $224.50. On Saturday, he sold 75 tacos and 94 crepes and made $347.25. What's the price for one taco? What's the price for one crepe? Okay, that's what we're looking for. So let's let X equal, what are we gonna let X equal? This is how I like to write price for one taco. Taco, dollar sign, right? We're talking about money here. So if X equals taco, then we'll let Y equal the cost of a crepe. And that's step one. We've defined our variables. And this is good because when you work through this whole big problem, you're like, what did I just find? And then you can refer back to um, your, your first um, step, which where, where you define your variables. So now we're gonna write the system of equations. And in this problem, it's gonna look like this. We have a whole scenario for Friday, right? He sold 56 tacos, so 56 times how much a co taco cost. 47 crepes, so 47 times the number of crepes that were sold. And that's going to equal the total amounts that they earned on Friday, which is $224.50. So now let's do another equation that represents Saturday. Saturday, he sold 75 tacos, so 75 times the price for one taco, plus 94 times the price for one crepe, is going to equal $347.25. Okay, so now we've got this system of equations. What am I going to use? What method am I going to use to solve this system of equations? Ooh, this is, these types of problems get um, a little bit hairy, but here we go. Let's see. Can I easily solve for y? Well, a method that I like to use when there's a coefficient in front of every variable is elimination. And I can see that 47 actually goes into 94, right? So the LCM of those two values is 94. Well, I can multiply this by... Too, but if my goal is to create the same but opposite coefficients, I'm actually going to multiply this by negative 2. And I'm going to rewrite that down here. When I do that, 56 times negative 2 is negative 112 times x. 47 times negative 2 is negative 94y equals 224.50 times negative 2 is negative 449. Now I've got these two equations, and I'm going to solve them using the elimination method. So let's go ahead and add these two equations. I know 94y and negative 94y, those cancel out. 75x minus 112x is negative 37x. And then when I combine 347 and 20, 0.25 uh, minus 449, I get negative 101.75. So now I need to solve for the variable x. So negative 101.75 divided by negative 37, I get x equals 2.75. Okay, well what does that value represent? Well, x is the price for one taco. Okay, one taco costs $2.75. Now I know what the value of x is. How could I find the value of y? Well, I'm gonna do this, let's see. You know what, I'm gonna do this right over here, um, bottom left. I'm going to plug it into that top equation. So 56 times instead of x, I'm going to write 56, whoop, 56 times what x is, which is 2.75, plus 47y equals 224.50. Okay, so 56 times 2.75 is 154. 
plus 47y equals 224.50. Okay, 224.50 minus 154 is 70.5. So I've got 47y equals 70.5 or 70.50. And now I need to divide 70.5 divided by 47. I'm going to use a different color because it's... Uh, there's a lot going on here. So 70.5 divided by 47 is 1.5. So now I've got the price for one taco, the price for one crepe. So here's step two, you know, and then step three is like all of this right here. And then step four, I'm going to write over here. I'm going to write my concluding statement. So therefore, one taco costs $2.75. One taco costs two dollars and 75 cents and one crepe costs a dollar fifty right so there's my concluding statement right all of this work lets me conclude that one taco costs two dollars 75 cents one crepe costs a dollar fifty okay let's move on to our last equation in today's notes Charlie invested $100,000 in two different stocks. Stock A earned 5.7% interest and stock B earned 3.8% interest. If Charlie earned a total of $5,225 in interest on both stocks, how much was initially invested in each stock? Okay, so one of the really big things you need to remember is anytime you're given a percent in a word problem, I want you to think about it in terms of a decimal. Right, so 5.7% is 0 0.057, okay? And 3.8% is going to be 0 0.038 when we're writing an equation, right? Because that's how I represent that number in any equation. So the first thing we're gonna do is define our variables. We're asked to find how much was initially invested in each stock. So let's let X equal what was initially invested in stock A. And we'll let y equal stock b. And just because it's nice to just kind of have this, I'm going to write initially invested. Okay, so there's step one. We're defined, we've defined our variables. The next thing we're going to do is write our system of equations. So the system of equations is Charlie invested $100,000 in two different stocks. Okay, so the amount invested in stock A plus the amount invested in stock B is going to equal $100,000. Okay, so we've got what was initially invested, an equation that represents that. The next equation, he earned $5,225 in interest. So the next is what he, the next equation will be like an, an equation representing what he earned in interest. So he earned 5.7% interest in stock A. So what I can do is I can multiply what was initially invested in stock A times that percent, which is 0 0.057 times what was initially invested in A. Okay, and we'll do the same thing for B. 0 0.038 times what was initially invested in stock B is going to give me the total amount earned on this investment, which is $5,225, right? So we've used every single piece of information in here and I circled all the all the values okay so when I look at this I'm thinking I do not want to use the elimination method to solve this but in this top equation I could easily solve for one of these variables and I'm actually going to delete all of this over here I'm actually going to solve for one of these variables so we'll use the substitution method for this particular problem okay let's do color right here all right and in this case I'm actually going to solve for x so I'll just add or subtract y from both sides so I get x equals a hundred thousand minus y okay so now I have what x equals here okay x equals all of this well if x equals all of this anywhere I see x which is right there I can plug in this expression in for that so that's what I'm going to do in the next equation, 0 0.057 times x. Well, what is x equal? 100,000 minus y plus 
0 0.038y equals 5,225. And then we'll just simplify this, right? So, I mean, you know, you might want to use your calculator or you might not have to, okay? Because it's pretty, you know, we can just move our decimal around when we're multiplying by a multiple of 10. So 0 0.057 times 100,000 is going to be 5,700 minus 0 0.057 times y plus 0 0.038y equals 5,225. And now let's combine like terms here. And I'm actually going to combine these like terms, right? And I get negative 0.019y. Negative 0.019y equals, and then I'm going to go ahead and subtract 5,700 from both sides, right? That's that right there. I'm going to subtract 5,700. So 5,225 minus 5,700 is negative 475. Negative 475 divided by negative 0.019 is 25,000. So what was that? What does that represent? Well, what is Y? Y is the amount initially invested in stock B. $25,000 was initially invested in stock B. Okay, I've got that. Well, I know $100,000 was the total amount invested. So I know right here, if I plug in 25,000 for Y, X equals 100,000 minus 25,000, X equals 75,000, okay? So I've got the amount invested in each stock initially. So let's write our therefore statement over here. So we've got our system of equations here. We've solved it right over here. And now our last and final step is we're gonna write our concluding statement. Therefore, Charlie invested $75,000 in stock A and $25,000 in stock B. And that concludes your notes over solving a, or application problems involving a system of equations. I hope it was helpful. This is for Algebra 2 and I hope it was helpful.